I now hand the conference over to Mr. Harit Kapoor from Investec Capital Services. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Kapoor. Yeah, thank you, Vikija. Uh, on behalf of Investec Capital Services, we would like to welcome all the participants in the call, and special welcome to the management of, uh, of United Breweries uh, for the Q4 FI22 earnings call. Um, on the call with us is the senior management of United Breweries, represented by Mr. Berendo Dink, uh, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. P.A. Punacha, uh, Head Finance and Investor Relations. Um, I'd now like to hand over the call to uh, Berin for his opening remarks, post which we'll open the, uh, the call for Q&A. Over to you, Berin. Thank you very much, uh, Harit, and uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody on the call. Thank you for joining, and as Harit said, we'll... Uh, Discuss today the results of quarter four and the full year 2122. Uh, I'm joined by Mr. Punacha, and after the uh, opening comments, we'll be happy to take uh, any questions. So let us start with the results uh, highlights. Uh, the company recorded volume growth of 7% in the quarter, first prior year, driven by the continued recovery of demand uh, prevalent across nearly all the markets. Comparing Q4 versus Q2, Three, sorry, resulted in 14% sequential volume growth. The quarter started in January with a muted demand situation due to Omicron variant, but ending with a record month of March. UBL achieved share growth both in the quarter as well as in the year-to-date performance, further solidifying its market leadership. In the quarter, EBIT reached 220 crores, 5% ahead of the previous year. Top-line growth and cost measures were partly offset by higher commodity costs. The full-year results show strong performance with net sales up 38% and EBIT up 157%. The free operating cash flow of the company reached 721 crores due to continued improvement in working capital and curtailed investment levels. On the back of a strong liquidity position, the proposed dividend is significantly up to 10.5 rupees per share representing a circa 75% payout of profit after tax. On the performance by region, we have seen different patterns within the quarter as January got impacted by the Omicron variant, predominantly seen in the more urban areas, well followed in March by a record performance across virtually all the states. North posted a strong growth at 26%, particularly in Rajasthan, UP and Haryana. Delhi market posted a decline due to the implementation of the new policy. West posted 11% decline, and in East posted a 2% growth, driven by higher volumes in the states of Arunachal Pradesh, Orissa, Assam, Meghale, partly offset by a fall in volume in the West Bengal state due to the introduction of a new route to market. South posted 8% growth, driven by higher volume in Telangana, partially offset by lower volumes in Karnataka and Kerala. Turning to the sales, these were up 11% in the quarter, driven 7% by volume and 3% by favorable price mix. Our positive price impact was partly offset by an unfavorable state mix. On a full year basis, the volume growth was 33% and price mix positive 5%. Turning to page 8 with the EBIT breakdown. Gross profit improvement was there in absolute terms, with a lower gross profit margin due to the, com- due to the commodity inflation, in mainly malt, packaging, and energy costs. Fixed expenses were well contained, resulting in margin expansion on these lines that partly offset the commodity price impact. In the fixed costs, there was good leverage effect of revenue growth coming through. Personnel costs are below prior year, despite the higher volumes. Depreciation is also below prior year due to the curtailed investments in the last two years and some assets now being fully depreciated. The resulting EBIT margin ended at 12.9%. Moving to the cash flows, the full year saw improvement in cash flows owing to higher underlying profitability and continued working capital reduction. Similar to last year, again, nearly 300 crores of working capital was freed up. Apex was also curtailed as earlier explained. Free operating cash flows came in at a record 721 crores, and as shared in the last quarter update, all remaining turn debt has been prepaid. The chart on the bottom right shows the cash flows last five years and the growth despite the COVID impact in the last two financial years. Finally, on the outlook and a summary, that although the COVID trajectory, of course, remains unknown, 
the company sits confident in successfully navigating any potential impacts with an agile response. With the demand picture normalizing, the company is now gearing up for the full peak season, which has shown a promising start in the month of March. The commodity cost picture remains challenging and volatile. The company is in the process of securing price increases in combination with continued cost measures to mitigate these impacts. And as always, we remain very optimistic about the long-term growth drivers of the industry on the basis of GDP growth, urbanization, and evolving consumer trends. UBL is very well positioned to leverage this and drive these opportunities. With that, I conclude the opening comments and let us move to the Q&A, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use answers while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Avnish Roy from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. My first question is on working capital and CAPEX. So, uh, congrats on working capital reduction. So, could you elaborate uh, any particular state where uh, you have seen more working capital reduction, any particular initiative? And you have mentioned CAPEX curtailed to minimum requirements. Now, with growth coming back and uh, COVID seeming lesser of a risk, uh, would your CAPEX uh, be coming back uh, in, in, say, FI 23-24? Yeah, on the uh, working capital, I think that's been uh, fairly broadly uh, spread across markets. Uh, of course, uh, some markets we operate with distributors, some with uh, the government corporations. Uh, but it's really a result of efforts to reduce uh, excise uh, uh, capital being uh, blocked in the various states. But also some uh, some trading partners uh, trying to reduce the balances uh, there. So it's pretty, let's say, broad based. On the CAPEX, yes, you're right. Of course, we are now entering a, a new period for uh, for the company uh, uh, turning the corner, hopefully, on, on COVID. Uh, so with that, we uh, have our focus now again on expansion. Uh, I would not immediately expect levels back of pre-COVID in terms of CAPEX, but more maybe in the area of 250 to 300 crore, depending a little bit, of course, how this peak season uh, pans out. Uh, and those levels will then include, of course, the normal maintenance CAPEX, also continued investments in ESG initiatives like, like water optimization, um, also premium capabilities across the network, and some uh, some expansion uh, projects as well. Sure. My second and last question is on uh, the key raw material. So, uh, from a Ukraine crisis perspective, if you could comment on outlook on barley, and similarly, in general, inflation, what's the impact on glass and uh, corrugated boxes? And you mentioned that uh, you are uh, trying for price hike. So, any update on any state where you are seeing more uh, visibility in terms of price hikes regarding this? Sure, let me go uh, to the components of your question. So first on barley, yeah, the new crop uh, that we have now seen coming off the, uh, the fields and being traded is significantly up in price versus prior years. Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, uh, speculation in the market, coupled with high demand uh, in March as the uh, peak season, of course, was quite buoyant for the whole industry. Uh, further, we've seen in the last few weeks uh, before harvest, the high temperatures impacting some of the quality. So a few uh, components of the crop don't meet the quality standards for, for barley uh, uh, processing for beer. Uh, so this combined uh, has led the prices up some 70% uh, versus prior year. Uh, we have secured enough supply um, uh, out of the new crop uh, to ride us through the, uh, the coming uh, peak season and months. So there's no, let's say, risk on the uh, continu uh, continuity of supply. 
However, of course, uh, the price levels uh, are, uh, are very challenging. Uh, the buying season is still on, so we will calibrate our strategies as we move along. Uh, on glass, uh, you have seen that probably a lot of the underlying input costs like, like energy, soda, ash are uh, uh, on the upward trend as well. So we do expect some inflationary levels as well. Uh, we have seen so far some positive impact from better collections out of the market versus uh, prior year. Of course, there was a, a COVID impact, so that is mitigating the impact to some extent. Um, Yes, we continue to look at price increases, uh, of course, to uh, its principal uh, part of this on to uh, consumers. Uh, as we stand today, we have secured price increases in Delhi, uh, higher realization in Rajasthan, in UP, uh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Orissa, MP, and a few smaller states. Uh, but we continue to look at um, the opportunities and the right balance, of course, by looking at the affordability of the category versus the uh, input cost uh, pressure. I think the context is also that overall the excise policies of the states in many uh, key markets have been stable. So I think that is a, a positive on the, the demand possibilities and the um, uh, market pricing uh, as such. Uh, so hopefully that addresses uh, your question. Yes, it uh, addresses, and uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Latika Kup Chopra from GP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Beren, I'll just uh, take a follow-up on your previous answer. Uh, you know, you talked about price increases uh, being secure across multiple states. Could you share with us what is the quantum of this price increase that you would anticipate to flow in from, uh, you know, uh, uh, Q1 onwards on a blended basis? Yeah, so I think it's important to realize that uh, we have taken price uh, in the year, of course, that we uh, reported the results. These are additional uh, price increases, which we always tend to start with in Q1 as soon as we have visibility on some of the excise policies. Uh, at this point in time, I don't want to give the exact quantum, et cetera, because some of it is being implemented as, uh, as we speak. Uh, and as I said, we, we continue to look at further options and uh, uh, opportunities uh, in the market. Uh, but of course, it is against the context that uh, yeah, the input uh, cost price picture is uh, a very high uh, given uh, historic uh, rates. And hence, that is, of course, uh, top of mind when we look at the quantum to, uh, to secure. So uh, let me check with you. You know, you talked about barley glass. Uh, you know, uh, prices uh, being higher. Uh, you talked about a 70% uh, uptick in barley prices. What is the uh, you know blended impact as you exited Q4 uh, on your COG index? Uh, and with the pricing decisions that you've taken, plus the cost uh, optimization measures. Uh, what is your comfort on your ability to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to mitigate uh, the commodity push uh, so that operating margins uh, could still be in a decent range? Or are you, you know, looking at a, at a significant pressure on operating margins? Yeah, on, on the barley, I think it's important to realize that uh, at the moment uh, we have still the existing stocks from last year. So during quarter one, We'll expect some of this new barley to flow into uh, the production process and hence in our uh, costing as well. Um, I think in the past we've always said that uh, with these kind of commodity cycles at the company, given the nature of the industry or some of the pricing restrictions, you are not able to offset it fully within one or two quarters. So that will require uh, some duration to uh, fully offset that. As we saw this quarter in the results and last uh, Q3 as well, I think there's good operating leverage on the fixed costs so that as we continue to uh, expand the top line, some of that margin uh, can be used to offset the commodity cycle. Uh, but I hope you appreciate that, yeah, as we're in a very dynamic situation with some of the procurement ongoing, the peak season um, uh, having just started, some of the price discussions on, uh, it is a dynamic picture, so uh, I don't want to start giving any margin guidance uh, at this point in time. 
All right, Doc. Thank you, and I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Kumar Doshi from Kotak. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Baron. Am I audible? Yes, yeah, yeah, audible. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. Congratulations on good working capital management. Sorry for pushing a little bit further on the previous two questions. Uh, uh, is it possible for you to give us some color whether you managed to take? Between five to ten percent price increase, or is it more than ten percent, or is it less than five percent at a portfolio level so far? Some range will help because right now, you know, other than Maharashtra, we are somewhat clueless about the price increases that are being taken in some of the smaller markets. Uh, so I think you have to factor in the, for example, in Rajasthan, UP, those are not typical markets where every year we uh, can take prices. So that is, I think, uh, a quarter positive. At the same time, we also always look at, uh, say, the affordability of the of the category, so that will also determine our uh, our pricing approach. Uh, so it's really, I think, a little bit too early to come out with definite numbers and ranges as to uh, what the uh, magnitude of the price increases us, uh, because I think there are various levers as to how to go about it. Uh, other elements I think bringing into the pictures, of course. To drive on premium, but also some of the uh, trade spends we do in terms of uh, schemes. So all of those will have an impact in the overall uh, outcome. Uh, so let's um, give that a bit more time to uh, to come back on that, Vijay. Uh, uh, Understood. Now, uh, you know, if inflationary environment continues, do you see a possibility of another round of price increases in the states where you have taken price increases so far? Or would you have to will you have to wait until end of the year or maybe next financial year for another round of price increase? Yeah, that depends really per state, but uh, certainly I would not uh, preclude that we will not go back uh, with any other price increases later in uh, in the year. So for a number of states, that's definitely a possibility. Yes. Sure. Uh, did I uh, hear it correctly? Are you seeing seventy percent inflation in Bardi prices? In India, or were you referring to global uh, uh, index? Sorry to interrupt, ladies and gentlemen. The management line got disconnected. Please stay connected while we reconnect. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding the line. The management line is reconnected. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Sure. Uh, uh, is are you seeing 70% inflation in barley prices in India, or was it, uh, you know, you're referring to inflation in global barley prices? So the uh, the prices that we've seen being traded in the last uh, couple of weeks in India are 70% up versus prior years. Uh, and barley for us is a cost component of around 15%, 1, 5%. Uh, again, the buying season is on, so it's not to say that this is the say, outcome as, uh, as such. Uh, but of course, uh, yeah, we closely monitor uh, developments uh, uh, on the ground. And based on our last discussion, I believe that you have low cost. Uh, barley inventory that covers you until the end of this peak season. Is that correct understanding? Uh, no, last time we, we guided that uh, it will last us uh, uh, to the midst of the, uh, the next quarter. Uh, that is still uh, there, of course. It's probably a little bit uh, earlier depleted given the higher volumes uh, that we see uh, at the moment. So in the next quarter, uh, or rather the, the period uh, April to, uh, to June, uh, some of the new barley prices uh, will come into our uh, uh, top And do you expect barley prices to come off significantly sharply as the new crop uh, is there in the market? Uh, or, you know, the 70% inflation is on the new crop that is... Uh, 
Yes, I'm totally fully referring to the new crop with that 70%, yes. Understood. Uh, that's helpful. Can you give a similar number for uh, uh, glass bottles? What is the level uh, inflation that you've uh, sort of seen in glass bottles uh, in percentage terms? Yeah, so that is really driven contract by contract. Uh, so there's not one number. Sometimes we have a fixed uh, price uh, going into the next quarter. Uh, our contracts where we have linked it to underlying input cost of, of energy or, or soda ash. Uh, but here I think you need to think of kind of um, mid to high single digit type of increases uh, on average. That is helpful. My final question is on volumes. So when I look at your diesel wise volumes and compare it with March 19, uh, you know, Western region volumes are 22% below March 2019 quarter, whereas in North you are up 15%, in East you are up 20% plus. South is also down, but I think that is largely due to route to market change in Andhra Pradesh. So why is this trend very divergent and why is Maharashtra underperforming uh, uh, significantly versus rest of the country? Yeah, so there are, of course, always differences in, uh, in state policies, in, in uh, uh, share performance, brand portfolio, etc. So overall, we've seen, uh, compared to that period, an expansion of, uh, of market share. Uh, so particularly to the West on your question, uh, market share is, uh, is also uh, uh, stable uh, for us. Uh, I think as a social industry, probably the pricing of beer is there somewhat more unfavorable versus the uh, uh, pricing of, uh, of liquor and spirits, really driven by the state policies on, on excise. Uh, understood. I'll go back in the queue and uh, thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nilesha from Moon Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, hi, Berend. Uh, a couple of questions from my end. Uh, you know, when I look at the gross revenues for the business for this quarter and take an estimate for volumes and hence the gross realizations, I see a decline uh, on a YOY basis. Should I put that down to state mix and the uh, on-trade, off-trade channel mix? Uh, when you have said uh, gross revenue, I assume you're talking about gross revenue inclusive of excise duty? No, before excise, sir. Yeah, that is before excise duty, right? Gross of excise duty, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. The prime reason is because uh, room to market change in uh, Delhi and in West Bengal. In the past, the duties was paid by United States Limited or any other brewer or spirit manufacturer, but now since uh, the amount of duties need to be paid by the distributor, so uh, that is not captured in UBS uh, or any other uh, alcohol industries to gross pay. Okay, got it, got it. And that's why your revenues uh, uh, are to that extent lower, got it. Uh, coming to the uh, cost structure for this quarter, I see a big decline in the employee cost. Now, while I understand that other expenses you know, there's lots of uh, discretionary expenses sitting out there. In the, you know, in terms of employee costs, is this just a true up of uh, the full year sort of year end bonuses, etc., or should we expect employee costs to be trending down lower even in fiscal 23, similar to what we've seen in the uh, 4Q of this financial year, of the last financial year? Yes, uh, I think you can take this as the kind of new type of runway. Uh, of course, uh, we have implemented a restructuring uh, in uh, December last year. Uh, so in that sense, that is now fully reflected in this number. Uh, at the same time, of course, some of this will move with, with volumes where we have, of course, uh, uh, kind of contract labor on the various uh, units to particularly in the peak season. We have, of course, the annual increment, etc. Uh, but the, the number itself, I think, is reflective of the, the new run rate, uh, as you what you asked about. Okay, got it. And um, just thinking about, uh, uh, you know, input costs. You highlighted barley. Uh, obviously, aluminium is up. I think has more than doubled. But in terms of glass, you spoke about mid to high single digit. 
uh, price increase, is that incremental or is it YOY? Because there's a big impact on input costs for this quarter also. So is it fair to say that on a YOY basis, glass is up more than 20, 25%, as will be the case in 1Q? Uh, no, I don't recognize that number. So I think if you look at the quarter or the year to date actuals, uh, I think the input costs on glass are kind of well managed and uh, relatively low, coupled with the effect that we had a, a better collections uh, of secondhand glass, which then on the average, of course, uh, mitigate any price increases. I think going forward, we do see let's say, further pressure on some of these um, commodity costs for, for glass, and hence um, we do see uh, inflationary pressure on, on glass itself. So what explains the 300 basis points plus YOY gross margin compression for 4Q? If it was not barley, if it was not glass, then what really caused that uh, compression? Sure, it's uh, uh, what we uh, talked about in the last uh, quarter as well. So there are some uh, elements of conversion costs, but it's also other packaging materials like cartons, foils, uh, the aluminium, as you mentioned, for cans, uh, some of the energy costs. Uh, so those kind of components are uh, included there. Okay, got it. And final question for me, in terms of pricing, uh, you know, you said it's too early, but just to confirm uh, to the earlier question, the pricing which you're talking about and alluding to is pricing which you've already got, and incremental pricing will be a function of the state excise policy decisions that come through starting one queue. Am I correct in understanding that? Yeah, so the uh, excise policies are by now largely known. Uh, so the states that I've mentioned uh, where we have secured uh, price increases and we're in the uh, process of implementing them, those are let's say, additional uh, on top of what we uh, uh, secured last year and the year today. Got it. And can you just ask what is the price increase in Maharashtra incremental which you have taken? Right now, in because of the barley and other cost increases. Yeah, so that's uh, one of the components that we're implementing right now. So let us first finalize okay. that, and then we come back on uh, on the magnitude. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much, Randy. Thanks. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Krishnan Sambamurti from Motila Loswal Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Berint uh, and Punacha. Uh, congratulations on a good performance in a difficult environment. Uh, sorry for harping again on the raw material cost. Uh, just correct me if I'm wrong. Typically, you occur inventory, raw material inventory for a large part of the year. And your comment uh, in your opening comment, you said that you acquired it for the peak season and a little bit beyond. Were you hoping for a reduction in raw material cost in April and May? And therefore, with the spike that you spoke about in April in barley cost, is that is that taken use in, on surprise by surprise negative? So the, uh, the typical buy-in pattern is that where we uh, secure uh, at the harvest and the trading takes place, let's say, from March to, to kind of May, June, as we cover up ourselves onto the next uh, peak period, so roughly 12 months. Sometimes we would prolong that, sometimes uh, we shorten that. And then of course, during the year, some further purchases may take place depending on the need and the business uh, volume uh, growth, of course. Uh, so at this point in time, I think the only thing what, what really changed was that uh, March volumes uh, picked up uh, ahead of, uh, of plans and hence the depletion of the stocks is then also a bit quicker. Uh, so therefore, from the uh, new barley crop, we have uh, made sure we, we have enough uh, stocks at hand to uh, uh, see us through the next few months. Yes. Okay, thanks. One more question you had also mentioned in response to one of the earlier uh, questions that uh, in the new crop, there has been some impact of uh, the higher temperature in terms of the quality. How significant is this and what sort of impact do you see this having going forward? 
So it's uh, again, it's uh, uh, an ongoing uh, uh, development in the sense that uh, the quality checks are always made. Some areas are more impacted than others, but one could think that uh, a certain smaller share of the total crop might not meet the quality standards, and hence the total quantity available for the uh, growing industry is, uh, from that perspective, probably a little bit less than under, uh, let's say, uh, 100% quality uh, crop uh, in totality. Uh, so it reduces a bit the quantity that is uh, available. Okay, just one final question. You spoke about speculation in the markets. Uh, could you elaborate on what you were referring to, barley cost? Yeah, so I think uh, from my perspective, uh, as there is in principle enough quantity to uh, supply the total industry for the next, uh, let's say, 12 months, uh, I would intrinsically not see the reasons why these Ladies and gentlemen, please stay connected. The line of the management got disconnected. Gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding the line. The line of the management is reconnected. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, so the, uh, the question I was trying to answer was the uh, one on uh, the speculation in the market. So I think there are parties that uh, yeah, stock up certain uh, quantities uh, potentially in later in the year, trying to sell them at, uh, at uh, potentially higher prices. Uh, that's kind of my reading of the uh, situation. Uh, so we'll have to see how that uh, how that pans out, of course, uh, for the remainder of the uh, of the trading and the uh, uh, buying period for for barley. Very useful. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Iman Shah from Dorit Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, the other OPEX line item has seen a sequential decline. Historically, Q4 generally has been seeing higher costs than Q3. Uh, any specific reason, or is it on account of we shutting down our non-alcoholic beverages production? Yeah, in general, we have uh, during the COVID period taken a number of cost initiatives. So that's uh, uh, I think reflecting in, in some of the cost lines. Uh, more recently, we have now uh, decided to close uh, the NAV production that we do in-house in uh, our, our site in, in Bihar. Uh, so in itself, it will not, you know, of course, move the, uh, the needle to a significant extent on, on cost, but it's just one further example of how we continue to uh, review all elements of, uh, of cost, and hence we decided it's, uh, it's more efficient to... Uh, have this produced at a third party instead of uh, in-house. So, so can can we go this as a uh, for for future quarters or run rate basing is uh, subject to volumes? Can we go this by this as a run rate cost? Yeah, there are no kind of uh, you know significant one-offs, positive or negative in uh, in the numbers uh, for the quarter. So from that perspective, uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhu Babu from Canada HSBC. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, just from the freight cost, uh, how do you see that trending? Because that's, I think, around 6% of revenue, so the next couple of quarters. And secondly, on the cost of goods, I think almost 50% is the cost of goods sold. So can you give us, as of now, what is the current mix of barley, glass, and uh, uh, packaging cost. Thanks. Sure. So freight costs, uh, uh, you know, one of the prime uh, rates, of course, is uh, is the fuel and the diesel. So we have seen post some of the uh, state elections, uh, diesel prices uh, go up. Uh, so when we talked about the overall commodity, 
cost challenge. Uh, that's definitely one of the factors uh, that we're uh, uh, having in mind there. Uh, barley uh, costs are around 15% of our uh, total input costs. Uh, glass is around 35%. And then the remainder are things like uh, cans or um, other uh, input costs for uh, for uh, for beer, secondary packaging, etc. Okay, so thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vishal Punmiya from Nirmal Bank Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sir, uh, seeing the current uh, demand trends, uh, do you believe on a full year basis uh, the industry can uh, revert back to the FI and 19 absolute volumes? Uh, maybe if you can get some sense on the current demand trends. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite early, of course. We just started the, the new year. Uh, I think we're, we're fairly uh, optimistic that uh, with the uh, the month of March, which was a record month for us, uh, that of course uh, shows a lot of uh, uh, confidence from uh, consumers and good uh, demand. So if that picture uh, obviously continues, then uh, uh, it's a definite yes to, to your question. But as we have seen in the past, uh, yeah, let's take one step at a time. I think there's still uh, all kind of uh, risks out there. Uh, one of it is, of course, uh, uh, the general uh, say purchasing power of, of uh, consumers with, with the high inflation uh, prevalent in, uh, in the many uh, industries. So I think there are a lot of variables uh, in the mix, uh, but our focus is really on the current peak season where, uh, as I said earlier, we are off to a good start. Uh, a lot of the breweries are uh, uh, close to uh, maximum uh, production at the moment. So that's uh, yeah, a good um, a good scenario, and let us take it uh, from there. Understood. Uh, secondly, uh, if you can give some sense on the competitive uh, intensity uh, in the industry in the current environment, and also if you can give the current volume market share absolute uh, terms. Thank yeah, you. on the volume market share, we are at levels around 54, 55%. Uh, I would always... Uh, yeah, I repeat that the competitive intensity remains quite high. So, uh, you know, the, the large international brewers are uh, very active in the market in India. There are smaller uh, regional uh, brewers active as well. Uh, some of it keep on kind of, you know, investing in, in, in products, in innovation, in uh, funding that uh, or running the business at a, at a loss. So I think there are various... Uh, uh, short-term and long-term approaches uh, from the various brewers, which makes it all uh, yeah, a competitive set. Overall, I think that's you know the, the good part is of course it drives the innovation in the market, it drives the penetration in the market, where beer today is still uh, uh, kind of very uh, low penetrated uh, in India. Uh, so that is uh, that is the positive uh, angle to it. Uh, but across the various trade states, across the various parts of the portfolio. Yeah, there is, uh, I would say, continuous uh, high uh, competitive intensity. The 54-55% market share you mentioned, was the exit rate or uh, was it the, on a YTD basis? That's for, uh, for the last uh, quarter. Understood, understood. Thank you and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Alok from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for giving this opportunity. Uh, my first question is on the Bale cost uh, inflation, which you said is about 70%. Now, uh, what largely explains that? Is it more to do with export or, or is it more a function of speculation? And what sort of, what sort of MSP uh, increase has been there in Bale? If you can just explain that. Yeah, so the uh, uh, the pricing, of course, uh, uh, let's say my view on on, uh, on that, I think a couple of reasons which, which I mentioned earlier. One is parts of the quantity uh, of barley have not met the uh, specs required for uh, the brewing process. So that means uh, some of the uh, 
uh, metric tons will not uh, be bought by, by the barley industry, sorry, by the brewing industry. Uh, secondly, I think there is uh, quite some pickup in demand quite quickly from uh, March uh, being a, a very good uh, month for the brewing industry. So people quickly uh, went uh, to go into the market to buy uh, fresh barley. Uh, and thirdly, I think there's also uh, an element of kind of speculation given the global uh, um, uh, environment and of course uh, with, with Ukraine, Russia being large uh, exporters of wheat and barley. So there's some kind of yeah, sentiment to that. Um, so I think that has fueled really uh, a large part of this, this price increase. Okay, so just to follow up on that, uh, you know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the export of barley market is very, very nascent in India. Or has it changed because of this Russia-Ukraine thing? No, it has not really changed. So it is, as you said, quite, uh, quite low. Okay, okay. Uh, my second question is on the is on the growth in the key urban states. Now, when you say West has declined because of largely Maharashtra, and you know in South there's been lower volume in Karnataka. So, is it to do with anything to do with your share loss in those markets, or or what would you attribute that to? Well, I think if I look at the data, then in Jan we saw. Uh, let's say, the, any impact from Omicron more in the on-trade, which, which is more prevalent in the urban areas. So I think, if anything, that has uh, gotten a bit of a larger impact. Uh, but again, looking at March, we see that, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of good trading environment uh, very broadly across all the states and urban areas. So, uh, yeah. Okay. But there's no share loss uh, that you would attribute to in this market slightly? No, it's just that really the the share gains are, uh, yeah, I would say pretty consistent, pretty robust, and uh, uh, yeah, fairly uh, um, consistent across uh, uh, the states. Okay, and my third and last question is on your premium portfolio. Uh, now, I just wanted to check whether your whether your operating margins in the premium portfolio. Would be would be similar to the company level margins, or or would it be quite lower considering the fact that you could be investing in that? Yeah, so I think if you uh, look intrinsically just at the margins, they would be uh, uh, at or above the total portfolio. But factoring in the some of the investments which we do on on brand building, on on trials, on uh, uh, building the distribution. Uh, then there's a bit more investment. So, yeah, that is the, the first uh, periods of brand launches and, and building. Uh, but, of course, yeah, the immediate impact is on the consumer side. But we see good, good traction, good uh, demand. So, for the mid to long term, that is, of course, what, what we're pursuing. Got it. But would it be a positive operating margin, right? It would at least be positive. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Thank you very much and uh, good luck for your future course. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Surya Narayan Manian from DSP Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, hi, Brent. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so I just wanted to delve uh, deeper into the point that you made uh, about uh, you know, what, what happened in the Western states and why, uh, you know, we had a different volume trend there versus the rest of the country. And you mentioned that it's also because of, uh, you know, the excise policy in these states, which makes beer relatively more expensive versus uh, spirits. Now, as you think about the price increases that are to happen for you, uh, how do you think this uh, equation is going to change? Is it going to get worse? Uh, and how do you think about then the volume growth of these markets going into the next year? Yeah, so the, uh, I think there are uh, probably uh, two tasks, and one is on the policy front that we continue to advocate for, uh, let's say, more uh, actual, uh, uh, let's say, uh, path of, of excise uh, tariffs developing over time. Yeah, so if you look back, then uh, what I said earlier, that's been more favorable for spirits versus beer, and hence, of course, that has an impact on the relative growth and, and size of uh, the two uh, categories. 
so our job at hand is to uh, um, yeah, continue to explain and uh, uh, look at the broader picture, of course, as to what are some of the impacts of uh, such a trend. Uh, internally, or more on the short term, maybe, uh, of course, we also continue to look at our pricing actions to make sure we strike the right balance between, uh, let's say, short term, mid and long term, uh, not only, uh, let's say, in the competitive field of, of beer, but also having a, yeah, a, a holistic uh, view of other uh, uh, helpful like uh, segments uh, in the market there. Sure, uh, but as you see the uh, trends in March, uh, is that trend improving for these states as well, the Western states? Yeah, so in, in March we really saw uh, pick up. Uh, uh, I would say very broadly, including in uh, in uh, Mumbai, Maharashtra as well. So uh, yes. Got it. So, so it's largely a function of uh, on trade coming back, which will benefit you in these states as well. Yes, of course, it has a has a role to play. As well. Got it. And and just lastly on this, just the price increases in your view. Uh, you probably have a sense of what kind of price increases you have to take uh, for your uh, product portfolio. Uh, do you have a sense of what it is that the spirits uh, players will have to do? I mean, is that gap likely to widen because of the raw material inflation that you're facing versus spirits? Um, I don't know. I think the, the, the inflationary pressure is uh, not limited to, to beer or, or spirits, but I think it's very prevalent across uh, many of the industries. Uh, from what I can kind of see, it's also uh, relevant for, for spirits. But of course, every company will determine yeah, for themselves to what extent they will absorb some of that, what they want to pass on to consumers. And uh, yeah, within the Indian context, that can even be done uh, on various uh, outcomes within the brand portfolio and, and of course, uh, also different outcomes across the states. So yeah, we'll have to see, of course, uh, how uh, uh, other uh, uh, manufacturers in Alcohol uh, yeah, decide on that and implement it. Got it. All right. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you, Baron. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nathan Goser from Invesco. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Uh, one clarification. You did mention that... Uh, the Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Nathan. We cannot hear you clearly, sir. Uh, is this better? Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. Um, one clarification, um, on the call it was mentioned that certain price hikes, certain states have already started implementing price hikes and these are uh, post the closure of excise duty policy. Uh, so the uh, the question I'm trying to understand is uh, the price hikes that we have taken right now would be only factoring in the excise related change or we have also tried to price in the barley related impact? So the uh, price uh, increases or the states that I've mentioned are uh, examples where our realization would go up. So if we just price and, and kind of translate and change in excise, then yeah, our realization would not necessarily uh, improve or change. So these are really um, improvements in uh, realization for, uh, for us as a manufacturer. Got it, got it. But incrementally, the new uh, cost-related uh, uh, production will come into picture from uh, April onwards or probably June onwards into the system. That's where we will be needing additional price push to cover. Yes, so of course, we have seen last uh, two quarters, particularly already, uh, a number of uh, uh, commodity pressures. Uh, we have explained in the call that uh, some further pressure will come from particularly uh, barley and, and to a certain extent glass bottles. So hence, what is typically our um, uh, you know, more important uh, uh, quarter for price increases which is quarter one. Uh, hence, uh, those number of states uh, are important to, uh, to offset some of this impact. And at the same time, yeah, we continue to review uh, other states where possibilities are there to increase price combined with some of the cost measures that we can uh, can take to uh, to protect some of the the margin of course 
got it got it so uh, so effectively first quarter is very critical in terms of price hikes that we can take uh, yes. that's how the timing of the uh, the the beast behaves like uh, the price hikes can be only be around first quarter yeah so it is it's uh, not so much let's say a uh, uh, a choice that it can be only the first quarter so in some states there is possibilities also at different points uh, during the year but traditionally quarter one is important because then there's visibility on some of the excise policies and hence it's a more of a, a logical moment to uh, implement the price changes right and in in couple of other sectors last year we had seen that uh, you know those couple of other sectors also witnessed price increase where they needed permission from government and government did intervene and gave them price increase during mid part of the year which was not the case which was seen earlier in those sectors um, this being an odd year where you know this kind of cost push has been witnessed um, do we also have a window to seek additional price hikes during the year Yes, absolutely. So we have been on that uh, for a bit of time. So we make a lot of representations uh, uh, to the various states to allow price increases. And of course, one of the key arguments is the unprecedented uh, uh, commodity cost uh, environment that we see in the moment. So at the moment, uh, so that will uh, continue. So it's not to say that if uh, an approval is not granted, let's say today, that that we stop those efforts. No, that can. Uh, of course, also uh, be approved and implemented uh, at any other point in time uh, during the year. Got it. Got it. Thank you. This was very helpful. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjay of the money from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir, and thank you for giving me this opportunity. I just wanted some more clarity that uh, we recently closed this facility uh, at Bihar. So, I mean, what was the exact product we were producing here, and what is the cost saving we are expecting from this closure? So, the product we uh, just as maybe as a recap. So, our Bihar uh, brewery, uh, when uh, Bihar went into pro prohibition, uh, of course, it stopped uh, producing any any beer. We then a few years back shifted uh, production to Rattler, our zero zero um, uh, product on the Kingfisher brand. Uh, as we have reviewed, let's say the capacity utilization, the uh, fixed costs versus versus the volume, etc. Benchmarked that to alternatives. Uh, we've concluded that uh, it's, it's more efficient to uh, bring that to a third party where there's existing volumes of other products and hence you reach a better uh, utilization and uh, scale efficiency. Uh, and with that, uh, yeah, we have spent the operations in the uh, uh, production site in, uh, in Bihar. Okay, uh, so this is very helpful. And uh, if you can give us some guidance on the uh, on the revenue side or some margin side for next year, so that will be very helpful for us. Yeah, so typically we don't uh, put out guidance as to uh, margins or, or, or top line growth, uh, but yeah, as we commented, uh, I think the peak season for us is, is, is a key uh, season. So after two COVID years, uh, yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, uh, positive signals from the, the month of March that uh, yeah, the, uh, there's optimism about the uh, the progress of the uh, of the season. So hopefully that will be uh, uh, a good uh, good peak season for us. Uh, at the same time, yeah, there is a, a challenging cost environment where at length we discussed some of the uh, uh, pricing actions, some of the uh, underlying. Uh, development on the key input costs. Uh, so that is really the key uh, dynamic, I think, it's for uh, for the year 22-23. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. This is all from my side. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jai Kumar Doshi from Kotak. Please go ahead. Hi. Thanks for the follow-up. Uh, on working capital cycle improvement, uh, do you expect it to stabilize at these levels or is there further headroom to improve? I think we are, uh, of course, uh, 
happy with the progress so far. I think we will have to recognize that as the market uh, is, is you know, returning to, to normal, so you even even new growth levels. Uh, there will be some pressure on you know, expansion of that working capital block. Uh, of course, we take our learnings, we take uh, um, the achievements to, to sustain them. Uh, so I don't expect uh, year over year uh, further reductions as we have seen in the last two years. I mean, uh, of course, we would uh, put our efforts to, to uh, get the good results. Uh, but I think there's yeah, also at a certain level so much what one can do particularly considering uh, you know, a large uh, majority share of our customers are state governments that uh, will have set uh, trade terms. Uh, so those are not too easy to, uh, uh, to further optimize. Uh, so that's, uh, in summary, I would say, yeah, with the expansion of, uh, of the business and the market, um, uh, the working capital block might move back uh, a bit. Uh, but hopefully we uh, keep it well uh, below levels of, of pre-COVID. Uh, understood. And has route to market change in West Bengal and Delhi helped working capital cycle? Um, in Delhi, uh, yes. Uh, West Bengal, not really a big uh, difference. Uh, but most importantly, uh, yeah, where we saw some of the impact uh, in the quarter, I think both markets have now, by and large, kind of uh, kind of settled down. Transition is over. Uh, so we've seen uh, at the close of the quarter, uh, yeah, a good recovery in trading in both these uh, these states. Um, so that is, uh, yeah, hopefully that that transition impact is uh, is behind us now. And my final one, you have called out. That March month was record month for in terms of volume. Could you quantify it? And what do you mean by record? Is it like the highest month across all months in the history of the company, or was it uh, you know higher than the March 2019 quarter month? Or maybe some percentage terms, you know, what growth you would have seen in March 22? It's the highest all month sale in history of UBL. Understand. Any idea you can give why why this is versus last March? What could what would be the ballpark growth volume? Will there be March twenty one the month? The, yes, March twenty one month. You know, March twenty two month over March twenty one month. No, I would uh, compare it to pre code levels of March uh, twenty. So it is even above that. So March twenty was impacted by COVID, right? So are you referring to March two thousand nineteen? Yeah, 19, yeah. Okay, understood. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Harit Kapoor for closing comments. Yeah, thanks, Rutuja. On behalf of IDFC, we would like to thank the management of United Movies for giving us this opportunity to host the call and taking out time to interact with the participants. Uh, and we would also like to thank all the participants who joined on to the call. Um, just want to hand over now uh, to Darren for closing comments. So over to you, Darren. Okay, thank you, Harris, uh, for uh, having us and hosting us. And uh, thank you, all participants, for your interest in the company and your uh, questions. Look forward to uh, engaging uh, in the next uh, events. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Investor Capital Services, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>